Alright folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. Uh, the purpose of this video is to demonstrate uh, how to find the frequency of a mechanically oscillating system. The system we're going to look at here is called a simple pendulum. It's basically just a mass on the end of a spring, or string, sorry. And uh, so imagine we have a string here of length L. And I'm going to go ahead and do a numerical calculation here. We're going to let that L be one meter. And then a mass here. Um, Let's not worry about what the mass is because I don't think we're going to need it. So this mass is released here from an angle that I've got kind of drawn in red. I'm going to call theta 1. Actual numerical value is not important. Uh, position 2 here is at this green angle that I've drawn, which I'm just going to call theta. So I've got two positions shown, a theta 1 and a theta 2. The theta 1, this is some constant. This is some number. You know, if this thing were drawn back to some sort of angle, 5 degrees, 10 degrees, or something, and released, that's a numerical constant in the problem. As this thing oscillates back and forth, it's going to follow a path kind of like this. Oh boy, that's probably do a little better than that. Um, kind of a circular path. You know, it's going to go back and forth like this. And this green angle, theta, is going to be my position 2, and we're going to think of that as a variable now. All right, so I'm going to analyze this just like my last example. I'm going to write out a work energy theorem for a 1 to 2. I'm going to PE1 plus KE1 plus work equals PE2 plus KE2. All right, the potential energy terms are going to be gravitational potential energy terms. I'm going to go ahead and use the top here as a datum. So at position 1, if I make this triangle here, that distance I just drew, although imagine it being straight, um, that's the distance I need for my potential energy term. And that distance is adjacent to the angle theta, uh, either theta 1 or theta, you know, depending on which triangle I want to use. So that makes it equal to L cosine theta. So the PE1 term is going to be minus MGL cosine theta 1. That's my uh, shorthand there for cosine theta. This thing, will start, uh, this thing starts from rust, so it has no kinetic energy. There's no work being done for all the usual reasons. The only work being done in this, or the only force acting is the gravitational force and a tension. Uh, gravity does work, but we're using potential energy terms. The tension always makes a right angle to the velocity, so it doesn't do any work in this problem. All right, PE2 minus mg cosine, I'm just going to call that theta instead of theta2, just to be a little shorter. All right, the Ke2, now there's a couple ways to write the kinetic energy term. I'm going to go ahead and just write 1 half mv squared. Uh, but that v needs to be related back to theta. And, and remember the concept of arc length. As we move along this path here, that distance is called arc length, usually denoted with the letter s. It's equal to r times theta, or in this case, l times theta. And then the v is the speed of this object, which would be ds dt, or I can shorthand that to s dot. If l is constant, then that would equal um, l times theta dot. So this v right here can be written l times theta dot. Uh, so I'm going to rewrite this equation, taking note that the mass is the same here, here, here. Get rid of the zeros and make that substitution. We're going to have minus gl cosine theta 1 is going to equal minus g, whoops, I forgot the L in this potential energy term right there. Oops, sorry about that. So PE2 minus mg L cosine theta. Um, all right, so getting back, the mass cancels. G L cosine theta plus V squared over 2, or 1 half V squared. And the V is equal to L theta dot. And again, that's being squared. Okay, so there's the equation for the system. Um, it's set up in such a way right now that, you know, you tell me a pair of thetas, I'll tell you a theta dot. Uh, I want time-dependent information in the system. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and time differentiate everything. So again, I, I call that the time derivative hammer here. So we're going to DDT this thing with the hammer. Boom. So again, this entire thing is constant, so its time derivative is zero. Over on the right here, when we take a time derivative of this cosine term, we're going to get minus sine theta d theta dt. So that's going to give us a positive gl sine theta theta dot. Right. And then the next term, let's see, we've got to bring down the 2. That's going to give us an l squared theta dot to the first power times theta double dot, second derivative of theta. I'm going to take a moment go over that derivative again, make sure I did that right. So 
Let's see, derivative cosine is minus sine. That's going to make that plus sine theta, but you have to chain rule it, so times d theta dt. And again, that's just shorthand for d theta dt. All right, over here, we have an L squared. When we differentiate, we bring down the 2, and that makes that a 1 times theta to the first power. That also has to be um, chain ruled, and that's why we have a second derivative there, theta double dot. Take a little note that these are the same. And then I'm going to do highest derivative first with a 1 in front of it, like always. And that's going to give us theta double dot plus, it looks like g over L sine theta equals 0. I think that's what we get if we divide everything by L squared. All right, now this animal. The equation we have is not quite in the same form as the previous ones. We would need a, we need a theta there to make this thing have harmonic solutions. Right now that thing is a um, nonlinear equation. So what I'm going to use here is I'm going to use small angle approximation. You've seen this in calculus where uh, something like limit as x goes to zero of sine x over x is equal to one. That's because for small values of x, sine x is approximately equal to x. So I'm just going to use that here, small angle approximation. For small angles, sine theta is approximately equal to theta. So we can write this theta double dot plus g over l times theta equals zero as long as we restrict, restrict ourselves to uh, small angles. Okay, next step is recognizing this thing has harmonic uh, solution or trig solutions. So theta can be written some sort of a sine bt plus c cosine dt. Now, in this particular example, all I'm interested in here is the frequency, and that's it. And the frequency is not dependent on initial conditions at all. So long story short, what that allows me to do really is just take half of this. The frequency is, to find the frequency, we need either the B or the D. It doesn't really matter which. I'm just going to throw this thing away because the frequency is not dependent on the initial conditions. I can choose initial conditions such that all I need is the sine function. And I'm going to start looking for B now. In order to get B, I'm going to need the second derivative, so I'm going to go ahead and differentiate this once. A, B, cosine B, T. Differentiate it again. Minus A, B squared, sine of B, T. I'm going to just sub that into my equation here. And I'm running out of room, but let's see. So we're going to sub this here. So we're going to have minus A, B squared, sine of B, T plus g over l times theta. In my theta, I'm going to take uh, just a sine of bt equals 0. All right. Since I'm running out of room, I'm going to speed this up a little bit. Uh, if you factor this, you'll have one possible solution, a equals 0. We're not going to allow that because that would be the trivial solution. Sine of bt can't allow that to equal 0 because, again, that would be the trivial solution. But we're also going to have minus b squared plus g over l equals 0. So b is equal to square root g over l. In this actual example, um, I'm going to go ahead and do numbers here. Square root of 9.8 uh, meter per second squared over 1 meter. I'm going to get a number out of that. And I got 3.13. Now I'm going to, um, and this will come out in rad per second. I'm going to take a moment here, clean this up, and uh, come back to you. All right, folks, I'm back. That was pretty quick here. All right, so what we have just found is we found that value B was 3.13. I've input that into my solution, so I've got theta equals A sine of 3.13t. I don't even need A to plot it. Just do a quick graph of theta against time. This is just a standard sine wave, so I know it goes through 0, 0, and I know it looks like this. It's going to get up to plus A, whatever that is, minus A. Now, the A would depend on the initial conditions of the problem, like if uh, theta 1 were 10 degrees or something, then A would be, we could write plus 10 degrees, or we could do it in radians. But I'm only interested in the frequency. I only care right now about one cycle, so one cycle of this graph would be to there. That's the important point. At that point right there, 
the 3.13t has to equal 2 pi because this thing reads a sine of 2 pi, giving, giving me that zero right there. So the t that we're going to get, the time, give me a moment here. Okay. What I got out of that is about two seconds. That would be the period of oscillation. The frequency is one over the period. So this system should oscillate at about 0.5 hertz. That's one over the period. And I just did uh, just did this example in class. I had a one meter long deal. We uh, I'll probably make a video of this to post to um, to go with this video, uh, where you can clearly see the frequency of that thing is about is pretty much exactly 0.5 hertz. So uh, the stuff actually does work. Anyway, I uh, hope this video um, demonstrates this. I, I encourage you, I'll post it as a second video. Uh, I encourage you to look at the video of the oscillating system, measure the frequency yourself, and uh, compare it to these results. All right? Everybody have a great day.